Hey everybody, Patrick Hostis here. So surprisingly, the Las Vegas Metro Police Department actually released a preliminary investigative report today on the October 1 mass casualty shooting, otherwise known as the Las Vegas Massacre. Um, FYI, this is what I got planned. I'm going to go over all the things that I saw in the report that I thought were new or interesting or something that uh, is worth taking note of and then after I get through all that stuff I'm gonna show you the new pictures of the crime scene that they released so uh, it might take a little while but let's get to it alright first up uh, the uh, and I'm probably saying this wrong but the Ogden on September 17th 2017 Paddock checked into the Ogden where he was booked through September 28, 2017, which overlapped his reservation at Mandalay Bay. The Ogden is a condominium complex located in downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. Paddock stayed in three different units during this time. Paddock stayed at the Ogden co uh, coincided with the Life is Beautiful Music Festival. Similar to the Route 91 Music Festival, the Life is Beautiful event was held in an open-air venue from September 22, 2017 through September 24, 2017. While staying at the Ogden, Paddock exhibited behavior which was similar to the time spent at Mandalay Bay. Paddock left for long periods of time, returning to Mesquite, Nevada, flying to Reno, Nevada, and traveling to Arizona. Paddock was observed numerous times gambling at, uh, at downtown Las Vegas casinos. Paddock was also observed moving numerous suitcases from his vehicle to the various units he rented. From September 25, 2017 through October 1, 2017, Paddock transported multiple suitcases to his room on several occasions. Paddock also left the Mandalay Bay on multiple occasions for long periods of time, often returning to Mesquite, Nevada. And the report had this to say about uh, Jesus Campos. Security officer Campos heard what he described as a rapid drilling sound coming from room 32-135 after he hung up the phone. As he walked down the 100 wing hallway, Campos heard what he described as automatic gunfire coming from the area of room 32-135 and realized he had been shot in the left calf. He took cover in the alcove of room 32 dash 122 and 32124 and utilized both his cellular phone and radio to notify his dispatch he was shot. Security officer Campos advised he was shot with a BB gun or BB or a pellet gun. I found that a little interesting. Um, he was, I believe, hit with a 223, um, which is basically, uh, technically it's a 22 caliber rifle but it's got so much powder behind it that the ballistics are way different so um, I'm a little surprised uh, that he thought it was a pellet gun especially if he could hear the automatic weapon sound which would obviously not be the same as a pellet gun but anyway I thought that was a little uh, interesting that, that this was uh, included on in the report now this has to do with the uh, actual breaching into the room um, when they, the police finally went into the paddock's room. Approximately at 23.26 hours, which is 11.26 p.m., the strike team made a second explosive breach from inside of room 32-135 into room 32-134 through the connecting doors. Immediately after the explosive breach on L. VMPD SWAT officer negligently fired a three-round burst from his rifle. The rounds fired from the SWAT officer's rifle struck a chair, an entertainment center, cabinet, and a wall. Now you can hear that uh, if you listen to the police uh, audio from that night, the police radio traffic. They even say that they had shots fired in there, so I never really thought this was that big of a deal. Um, having had to go into rooms like this in, in Iraq, granted, and you know, knowing how the adrenaline goes and the uncertainty of everything, I can certainly understand why um, a SWAT officer would accidentally squeeze off <laughs> some rounds. I mean, I'd rather they don't do that, but I can certainly understand the, uh, the nervousness they must have felt going in there. But um, I was kind of curious where those rounds went, but it says it right there. That's fired a three-round burst. Now this has to do with uh, Paddock checking in to the Mandalay Bay on September 25th. 
Um, it says at approximately 1656 hours, which is 456 p.m., a uh, bell man met Paddock and escorted him to room 32-135. Paddock requested to go through the service elevators and not through the guest elevators. According to interviews, this request is not uncommon for guests of the hotel. Paddock rolled one bag and a bellman used a luggage cart for the other four bags. From approximately 2137 to 2140, which is 937 p.m. and 940 p.m., Paddock had his vehicle removed from Valet and Paddock left the Mandalay Bay. At approximately 2300 hours or 11 p.m., Paddock arrived in Mesquite, Nevada. Now this has to do with September 26th. From approximately 2245 to 2252, or 1045 to 1052 p.m., Paddock valeted, validate, validated his vehicle at Mandalay Bay and took six suitcases located on a luggage cart and one rolling suitcase. Paddock rolled the suitcase himself up to room 32135 by way of the service elevator with the help of a bellman. The bellman who escorted Paddock on September 25th was different than the bellman who escorted Paddock on September 26th. Alright, this has to do with September 27th. At approximately 16.32 hours or 4.32 p.m., room 32-135 was cleaned by hotel staff. Paddock remained in the room as it was cleaned. So later that night... Uh, at approximately 2300 hours or 11 p.m., Paddock arrived at the Walmart in Mesquite, Nevada. He purchased luggage, razor blades, flake, or fake flowers, a vase, and a styrofoam ball. On September 28th, from approximately 942, or correction, from 2042 to 2146, or 842 p.m. and 946 p.m., Paddock traveled from Mesquite, Nevada to the Mandalay Bay and parked in Valet. Paddock was seen entering the Mandalay Bay with two rolling suitcases and a laptop bag. On September 29th, a second refrigerator was delivered to Paddock's room, uh, that was from the 32-135, that's where it was delivered to. Uh, staff was asked to only change linens and take out the trash in room 32-135. A staff member was told by Paddock not to vacuum 32-135 and not to remove the food service cart from the room. S uh, staff was asked specifically to change sheets and towels in room 32-134 and inform Paddock when room 32-134 was completed. Paddock remained in room 32-135 and used his laptop as the rooms were being cleaned. On September 30th, uh, Paddock traveled to Mesquite, Nevada twice from Mandalay Bay. Paddock placed Do Not Disturb signs on both 32-135 and 32-134. Paddock gambled for a couple of hours and brought more suitcases up to his room. At approximately 0100 hours or 1 a.m., Paddock drove to Mesquite, Nevada. At approximately 0556 hours or 556 a.m., Paddock returned to the Mandalay Bay with four suitcases. From approximately 12.04 to 12.15 hours, which would be 12.04 and 12.15 p.m., hotel staff serviced the private mini bar of room 32-134. Paddock placed the Do Not Disturb signs on the room door sometime after 12.15. On October 1st, at approximately 12.29 hours or 12.29 p.m., Paddock was observed waiting for an elevator with two rolling suitcases. There was also a third bag hanging from one of the rolling suitcases. From 14.23 to 19.40 hours or 2.23 p.m. and 7.40 p.m., uh, or, or excuse me, the doors for room 32-134 and 32-135 were manipulated multiple times. For example, the doors were opened, closed, and the deadbolt locks were engaged and disengaged several times. Now this is going to uh, 
when the shooting began and I found this interesting that Paddock fired an awful lot of rounds at the uh, fuel tanks trying to set them off and a couple of them actually hit you can see on here a lot of them missed but some hit and uh, some they're unable to determine if it hit the fuel tank or not but I'm going to show you some pictures later of what the effect on the fuel tanks of these bullets was but there it is they got a pretty good idea apparently that he uh, fired this many rounds at them at the fuel tanks now this section has uh, is more on Paddock's background and things that hap happened leading up to uh, the October 1st shooting. Uh, during a stay at the Mandalay Bay in the beginning of September 2017, Mary Lou Danley, who was Paddock's longtime girlfriend, um, recalled uh, Paddock act behaving strangely. The two were staying in room 60-235 and she observed Paddock constantly looking out the window windows of the room which overlooked the Las Vegas Village venue. Paddock would move from window to window looking at the site from different angles. And I want to make a point here. Um, remember that the, she says she has nothing to do with it? Okay, so remember this, that she saw him looking this way and looking bizarrely out the window. I mean, I know if I was doing that, my wife would probably asked me what I was doing. And uh, also, she admitted that she helped load magazines because she said to the FBI, oh, hey, I, some of my fingerprints might be on the bullet casings because I loaded magazines with them. I don't know. In my opinion, it's starting to look like uh, she's not quite so innocent. Paddock made numerous claims to friends and family that he constantly or consistently felt ill, in pain, or fatigued. An interview was conducted with a physician in Las Vegas who identified himself as Paddock's primary care physician since 2009. He last saw Paddock as a patient on, an around, on or around October 2016 for an annual checkup. He recalled the only major ailment Paddock had was a slip and fall accident at a casino approximately three years earlier which, which caused a muscle tear. The phys uh, physician described Paddock as odd in behavior with little emotion shown. He believed Paddock may have had bipolar disorder, however, Paddock did not want to t discuss that topic further with him. Paddock also refused antidepressant medication but accepted prescriptions for uh, anxiety. He noted Paddock seemed fearful of medications, often refusing to take them. He did not believe Paddock was abusing any medications. Okay, I need your help with this one. Um, I've been up for a while and I'm a little tired, so maybe I'm just missing something here. But there's some weird stuff in Paddock's uh, hotel room inventory, and I'm not sure what the hell it's in there for. Um, so anyway, let's get to it. Uh, there was a stack of 14 loaded rifle magazines on the west side of the northeast pillar. A blue plastic tube with a snorkel mouthpiece attached with green tape to the east end and a black funnel with a fan inside at the west end extended from the east side of the suitcases across the coffee table to the west side of the room adjacent to the doors of the west bedroom. Now I'll show you pictures of this thing uh, later on so you can get a better view of it but I really don't understand what the hell it was and what he was trying to build like something and he has the mouthpiece there you'll see it I, I have no idea what the hell this is maybe it's something simple and I'm just missing it but I don't know what it is also if you look in the description below um, I'll have the link to this report so you can look at it for yourself and uh, read all the details on this stuff Paddock used many different types of ammunition. Uh, several types of ammunition were located within rooms 32-135 and 32-134 loaded into rifle magazines for both the AR-15 and the AR-10 style rifles. The AR-15 fires a .223 slash 5.56 rifle magazines were loaded with hollow points and polymer tipped hollow point ammunition. The AR-10 .308 slash 762 rifle or 7.62 rifle magazines and the bolt action rifle were loaded with tracer frangible incendiary armor piercing and armor piercing incendiary ammunition I found this interesting uh, there were approximately 1965 leads investigated there were approximately 21,560 hours of video 
and 251,000 images obtained by investigators of the LVMPD and FBI. Now, this is the interesting part. Analysis found 529 sightings of Paddock. And how many have we seen? Zero. Now, if you remember, um, there were some computers found in Paddock's room, um, and this is what they were able to pull off of their, his Google search queries. On 5-18-17, searches were performed for summer concerts 2017 and Grand Park Functions, Biggest Bear, La Jala Beach, or something, I probably said that wrong, but whatever. Open air concert venues, biggest open air concert venues in USA, and how crowded does Santa Monica Beach get? These people, obviously, he was looking for targets. On September 4, 2017, searches were performed for Las Vegas rentals, Las Vegas condo rentals, Las Vegas high rise condos rental or rent, and Las Vegas Ogden for rent. On 9517, searches were performed for Life is Beautiful expected attendance, Life is Beautiful single day tickets, and Life is Beautiful, beautiful Vegas lineup. And that Life is Beautiful was uh, another concert that uh, went on there. On 91517, searches were performed for SWAT weapons, Ballistic Chart 308, and SWAT Las Vegas, Ballistic, and Do Police Use Explosives? Here's some more Google search queries. Uh, how tall is Mandalay Bay? Uh, Nevada gun shows. Life is beautiful. Excalibur Hotel and Casino. Las Vegas Academy of the Arts, of the Arts Performing Arts Center. Fremont Hotel and Casino. El Cortez Hotel and Casino. Family Courts and Service Center. Gary Reese Freedom Park. So uh, in Paddock's vehicle, they uh, went through with a a dog to see if it alert on any explosives and it did and the dog did alert that there was some kind of explosive substance in there so upon rendering the vehicle safe the vehicle and all items located inside were photographed all items removed from the vehicle were placed back inside and the vehicle was sealed the vehicle was subsequently towed from Mandalay Bay Hotel to a secure FBI facility for a thorough search and evidence collection Evidence collected from inside Paddock's vehicle included loaded rifle magazines for both AR-15 and AR-10 style rifles. Also collected were 22 pound containers of exploding targets, 10 1 pound containers of exploding targets, and two 20 pound bags of explosive precursors. So in today's press conference, Lombardo basically said that, you know, he feels that the financial losses, the monetary losses is probably what finally drove Paddock uh, over the edge. And uh, as I was reading the report, I came across this and I thought it was kind of interesting. One aspect of the investigation focused on Paddock's financials. The investigation proved Paddock was self-funded through his gambling and past real estate transactions. He was indebted to no one and, in fact, paid all his gambling debts off prior to the shooting. So, I thought that was worth noting. Now, as far as uh, Paddock having other targets in mind, um, I found this to be uh, disturbing here. The investigation revealed several indica indicators of intent on the part of Paddock. Those indicators are as follows. Paddock had a reservation for a hotel during the Lollapalooza Music Festival held at Grand Park in Chicago, Illinois during the month of August. Like Route 91, the Lollapalooza Festival was held in an open-air venue. Paddock specifically requested a room overlooking the venue when he made the reservation. The reservation was canceled two days prior to the check-in date. Uh, two, Paddock made lodging reservations during the Life is Beautiful music festival held in downtown Las Vegas, Nevada. The festival was also an open-air music venue, attended by thousands of people. Paddock requested units overlooking this venue, uh, uh, overlooking the venue, uh, Paddock reserved three different units during the period and all faced the venue. Paddock was observed in video surveillance transporting several suitcases from his vehicle to the units he reserved. Paddock was alone for the trip and was never accompanied by anyone for more than a casual conversation. Investigators have been unable to determine if Paddock's intent 
intended an attack during this festival or if he used it as a means to plan a future attack. Um, number three here, Paddock conducted several internet searches while planning his actions. Search terms included open air concert venues, Las Vegas SWAT tactics, weapons and explosives. Paddock also searched for various gun stores. So at least, uh, uh, I mean that, it looks like dry runs, like he did a dry run at this Life is Beautiful music festival. Um, or maybe he chickened out or something like that. I mean, who knows, but moving the bags there, maybe he just moved them to see if he could get away with moving that many bags, but that is uh, pretty disturbing. Included in the report is the uh, location where uh, every one of the victims, uh, the deceased victims, were found. Um, you can see the, they have an overview of the where the attack occurred and where exactly everybody was found. All right, now as promised, I'm going to show you the pictures that uh, they included on this in this report. Um, here you can see the view from the 100 hallway towards room 32-135. You can see on the right there the um, room service cart with the camera and all that, and the doors blasted out because the uh, SWAT team did an explosive breach to get in there. Now here's a picture of the food service car in the hallway with camera, so this is a zoom in on it, you can see. Now I was going to look on here because uh, if you remember the Walmart trip where you got the fake flowers and stuff, and I was trying to figure out if that stuff was still in the room or if what, I thought maybe you used it to camouflage this stuff, but uh, I'm not seeing it. I got, what was it, a styrof styrofoam ball and fake uh, flowers, so... As I go in there, I'll be looking at these pictures and see if uh, I can spot that junk. Or maybe he gave it to somebody else, I don't know. Now, here's a picture, another picture of the food service card in the hallway with camera. So he had a second camera there looking the other way, so he could cover both sides of, uh, of the hallway here. Now, here's a picture. This is a view from the entry of 32-135 towards the sitting area. And you can just make out that snorkel thing right there. The big, uh, if you look on the floor near the uh, couch there, it's going across from left to right. A uh, little hose thing, and I believe there's some clearer pictures of it coming up. Yeah, see, on this picture here, this is a view from the foyer of room 32-135 towards the sitting area, and you can see that uh, just a little bit better view of that weird snorkel thing he created. And you can see over there the weapons, some weapons on the table. I guess that's a detective or somebody walking around there on the right-hand side. He put those two seats together so he could throw his weapons in there. Now this is a view from the sitting area towards the living room. And you can see the, the hose thing there again. You can see Paddock's body and the center of the frame there. Uh, you can see some weapons lying around. Incidentally, um, if you look, follow that link I have and you go uh, on look at the report, you can actually see a list of the guns, the exact brand uh, type of guns he had and the brand name and all that. So uh, you should check it out if you want to find out exactly what kind of weapons he had in there. Uh, this is the view from the sitting area towards the bar, kitchen, kitchenette. You can see Paddock's body on the left there and you can see the, the weapons uh, somewhere on the bar and then all in the floor and in the chair there on the right. All right, this is the view from the sitting area towards the bar slash kitchenette. It's a little closer view of the weapons there. Now this is the view from the sitting area towards the master bedroom. You can see the weapons there. And on the right, if you look at that weapon on the right there, um, I believe that's a surefire 100 round magazine that he has facing the camera there. Um, somebody pointed out some of these weapons you look at they'll have bump stocks on them and some won't so he didn't have every single one of these weapons um, equipped with a bump stock matter of fact I read that one of them um, had no sights on it at all actually I mean usually you'll have some kind of optics or something I believe it was an M4 and he had absolutely no optics on it nothing so I don't know if he just figured if, if he got in the general direction of his target I guess he figured it was okay but yeah, it was a real hodgepodge of weapons. And this picture is a view of the connecting doors between room 
32-135 and 32-134. All right, now here's that weird thing I was telling you about. You can see the blue hose with the snorkel mouthpiece attached. You see it there, and he taped it on there. I mean, what the hell is this for? I mean, was he trying to, I don't know. And on the other end of it, they said they have a, it has a funnel with a fan in it. So, okay, he's getting air pushed in there. I don't know if you thought that would help with the SWAT team or, uh, I don't know. I really don't. I'm, like I said, I haven't, I've been, uh. Not feeling that well, and I've been uh, not getting a lot of sleep, so maybe I'm just missing it. But I, I don't know what the hell that thing is for, or why he had it, why he would waste time on doing this. I mean, if he was worried about tear gas or something, you could buy a gas mask for 17 bucks. You know, I don't know what. Uh... So anyway, like I said, maybe there's some reason for it. I'm just not figuring out, but I have no clue what the hell it would be. Now, this picture here shows <clears throat> the surveillance camera mounted to the room door peephole. And you can see um, past the door there, through the door it was blown off, you can see uh, the dessert cart or whatever the hell it was where he hid those other cameras. So he put one right up to the peephole as well. All right, now this is a picture here of the small sledgehammer with a bunch of spent casings. Um, two, two, three casings, it looks like. Um... So it, you can see the little hammer he used to bust out the windows, and he put some tape on the end of it there so it wouldn't be so loud, I guess. And you can see the little bits of glass and everything there. Here is that uh, note that he was writing the bullet drop information, the equation to figure out uh, the bullet drop. Calc you know, the calculations basically to figure out where he could aim to either hit. I don't know if he was doing this to figure out the, the crowd or the uh, fuel tanks or whatever, what the hell he was trying to figure out with that, but that's what it is. There was some information in the very beginning that, oh, it could have been a suicide note or something like that, but, um, you know, take if you believe the police anyway, this is what uh, this thing actually said. Uh, this is damage to the uh, door of room 32-135. You can see, I believe that's the one SWAT blew up. But you can see bullet holes in it that um, I'm assuming came from Paddock going outside. Uh, maybe one of those rounds is the one that hit uh, Campos or whatever. Alright, this is damage uh the other part of the door. Or damage to the entry door 32-135. So this is the other part of it there. I don't see any bullet holes or anything obvious there on this piece anyway. Now in this picture is the desk in the master bedroom of 32-135 with scuba mask and power hand drill. So the scuba mask things up there. Um, I don't know, I think maybe you just cut the mouthpiece off of that thing to duct tape it onto that weird apparatus he had out there in the living room or whatever um so and you can see the drill in member campos and was saying that he heard a drilling noise or allegedly so there you go that's what was found in uh, the desk of the master bedroom now here is a picture from the interior of room 32-134 from connecting doors and you see the busted out window there it's basically busted from top to the bottom uh, you got a weapon thrown on the bed there now this is the interior of room 32-134 uh, towards facing towards the bathroom um, pretty much the same as over there just see some weapons there This picture uh, is of the hallway of room 32-134 with food service cart and laptop connected to cameras. So, there you go. Now, this is Paddock's vehicle. Uh, this is the one where they had the dog alerted and they had to go through it. Now here you can see the explosive precursors that were found in Paddock's vehicle. These are the exploding targets that were found in Paddock's vehicle. 
Now here's the fuel tanks that Paddock was taking shots at that were located at McCarran Airport. Um, you can see the bullet strikes on there and the next couple pictures are uh, even closer. Here's a close up of one of the strikes. Um, looks to me like that was an incendiary round. Uh, it could have been an incendiary armor piercing round that went in there. Alright, here's another. This is the lower bullet strike. So I think it's safe to say that he did take shots at the uh, jet fuel tanks. And the final picture is the view that Paddock had from room 32-135 when he opened fire on the concert. So anyway, I hope uh, I hope you found this video to be helpful. I was I read the whole report today, and I was just trying to condense it down so uh, folks could kind of you could get the gist of it, or at least see the things that I thought were important out of the report. Um, like I said, I haven't been feeling all that great, so I'm sorry if uh, this video is not that great. But I hope you found it informative. Oh, I almost forgot. I wanted to throw in. Um, but now I uh, I put. Uh, Sheriff Lombardo's, I uploaded that video and shared it on my, my channel so everybody can see, but um, I don't, I didn't see anything in the report on this, but uh, there's, Lombardo did say something about Paddock having kitty porn on his computers in there, or at least one of his computer. I don't know how specific he got on it, but if you remember, his brother, um, not that one that they talked to right afterwards who was talking to the media saying he didn't do anything about it and all that not that brother but the another one um is in jail for uh child pornography so i don't know if that's some weird thing with the with the family or whatever but i i uh didn't see anything in the report on there but i wanted to point that out so anyway hope uh hope this video helps your understanding of what the uh what the las vegas police and uh fbi released today in this report this has been patrick Costas.